Hey, uh, so this is Old Man Banjo checking in for a super quick video because I had to log out, sadly, of Diablo 4, the closed beta, in order to eat and make a dinner. Uh, but I wanted to do like a quick video just summarizing my initial thoughts because, you know, I have a video that sort of, uh, you know, got a lot of comments and now I'm sort of um, uh, thinking about the feedback that I got from people in the comments of the video and my own feelings towards Path of it. Blah, towards Diablo 4. God, that was an actual Freudian slip. I didn't make that up. So my, my first thought is that the combat feels like PoE. Probably why I just made that Freudian slip. T t in my mind, if you've ever, if you played PoE, you know PoE has the sort of odd camera angle that hovers like quite close to your character, so there's a lot of stuff off screen, but you're quite focused on what you're doing. The camera angle is very similar to PoE. The way that you, you have primary and secondary abilities feels very similar to PoE, much less complex, but it feels like you have uh, things that are meant to meant to generate uh, a resource and then spend it, but not in a, a much more linear way like a lot of other MMORPGs. It feels like there's a lot of dynamic ways to, to generate those resources and then spend them, and you have quite a lot of choices from what I've seen over the skill tree. Um, and also, this also feeds into, I think, why the combat feels a lot like Path of Exile, is looking at the skill tree so far, I've only had a chance to play the Sorcerer so far, but the skill tree looks very much like a version of the PoE skill tree that's much easier to interpret. I can look at it and I can go, ah, so the way I want to play this character is going to be like this and this and this, and I want to be a fire sorcerer, but I really want good mana regen, but I'm confident that I'm not going to die, so I don't need to take any of these nodes. So there's, there seems to be like a lot of clarity on how you can build your character without needing to resort to the good old Path of Exile uh, YouTube guide series, which is great for the game, I think, most of the time, and very bad for Path of Exile YouTubers. Um, but overall, yeah, really, really surprisingly good feeling combat, hitting me in that place where I want to play, but I'm not sort of lost in myself and in and, and like the rabbit hole that is making the perfect character that for me, Path of Exile often uh, turns into. Um, the other thing is, and I think this has been sort of discussed, but maybe like not discussed in quite, quite the right detail. So like this game feels evil and I'm a, I'm a huge black metal fan. I love it when music or an aesthetic or a concert just feels genuinely, you know, freaking evil. And Diablo 4 really, really captures that feeling. You really feel like there are cultists around every corner. This is a dark, screwed up place. And it's such a, such an improvement from where Diablo 3 was, where all of the um, uh, villains felt sort of like Marvel characters. You know, like Diablo's just Thanos and it's all sort of wishy-washy. And this, this feels dark. It, it really does. And you get a sense that there's, that evil is invading the world and it's corrupting anyone and it could corrupt a friendly character. There's no sort of, yeah, the game just doesn't, the game's aesthetic doesn't pull its, pull its punches and it lives up to that trailer that was released years ago. It really does feel like that kind of dark, satanic evil. Um, and between these two points, I, I think my my overall, I mean, these were the, the two most central points I noticed while playing the game. And, and it, but they both sort of feed into one, which is Diablo 4 feels like Path of Exile for dummies, but I don't think that the that fact is a bad thing. I think I need a Path of Exile for dummies. I don't care what other what other people want. I mean, I sort of do because I'm, I'm making a YouTube video, but I, I want a Path of Exile for dummies because sometimes when a new Path of Exile season starts, I just can't be bothered anymore. I, I, I can't do the research. I don't want to think about the skill tree changes. I, I, I don't want to mid-max and I don't want to put in the research and the time and the effort because I know there's just going to be another season coming along. I just want to play the game and chill. I want to make choices. I want the choices to be interesting for me, but I don't want it to be like uh, writing an essay where it's like, it doesn't matter how good the essay is. You didn't read the primary literature for season 14 and now you're just, you know, useless. And Path of Exile really has come to feel that way to me over the past, really the last year, but I think particularly the last two years. Um, not that I don't love Path of Exile, I, I do, but I, I feel like I need to do too much research. And 
I feel like uh, the game does a really good job of giving you choices that are interesting, but without overwhelming you with the information. It's very easy to tell what's going to happen. Um, okay, so on to the negatives. Um, this is a worry that you're probably going to say, Old Man Banjo, look, it's going to be solved, right? Uh, it's, it's definitely going to be solved. Open world and lag. The game seems to lag for me a bit in the open world. And you're like, dude, it's an open beta. Chill out. And I, I would if that still wasn't happening to me in Diablo 2 sometimes. Like, I still have connection issues getting into games in Diablo 2. Diablo 2 has just been rife with server issues since its launch. And, I mean, it's possible that that's just a coincidence. But it does concern me seeing those similar types of server hookup lag when you're opening your inventory and the game goes... <laughs> You, those sorts of things, they're concerning. Um, hopefully it will be sorted out. Hopefully it's a lot easier for them to fix these sorts of things than it is in an older game like Diablo 2. And it's just, you know, the servers being overwhelmed by the beta. But I did take that away as a bit of a concern. Um, I don't know why I put this under negatives. I'm clearly writing the script too fast. The dash button is awesome. It's not a negative. The dash button is awesome. The dash button really, really adds a lot to this game because it's there for all characters, I think, and it really just adds in that little bit of extra decision making when it comes to boss mechanics because I think it refreshes on a five second cooldown if I'm counting correctly, and it just gives you that extra bit like, do I need to dash now or is that next ability worse? And there's a little bit of decision making more similar to I guess like a game like Lost Ark, um, though I'm not a big fan of Lost Ark, but it just it just seems to integrate well into the game as it is now, or at least in my early playthroughs through it through, through uh, Diablo 4. And I'm 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 hopeful that if they they have a mechanic like this this early in the game, that there's the space to expand and to to raise the skill cap. Because what I complained about in my Diablo 4 video previously, and I'm still I still hold to, is that uh, Blizzard and, and just um, these developers in general, unless they want to make a super chill ARPG where you just click something like a Titan Quest. But if we want to move beyond that, we need to find ways to level up the skill cap in ARPGs so that people can become more engaged, that they can become pressed to play their characters in a better way, rather than just doing what often happened in Diablo 3, where players would just play, you know, the best Rift build possible. And there's still some skill there, but it's really like maxing meta and stuff like that. We want some player skill, some reaction times, some cool bosses, and from the one intro boss, I'm sure most of you watching this video will know what I'm, what I'm talking about, there still feels like there's gonna be some dynamics uh, with this first boss. Um, back to negatives, because I'm, this is put together well. Um, one thing that I'm concerned about a little bit is how future seasons will work. It very much feels, playing through the game so far, like the game will have a, a storyline and a narrative and, and character development structured similarly to a game like Lost Ark, where you really need to play through the story, you need to tick all the boxes. I wasn't as expecting that, although I had seen people say it, I still didn't quite believe it. Um, and I, I was expecting a game that seemed to lend itself much more to seasonality, like you would just pop into the open world and explore things. That seems to sort of be the case, but from what I'm seeing so far, it looks like there's there's quite a lot of lost lost arc linearity where you need to wander around the open world and and complete the story, a bit like uh, sort of a JRPG. You know, you need to do all the side quests, but you need to progress the main story um, to get to where you want to be, which is exploring the in game. But you know, as we saw with Diablo three. And, and the in incredible amount of iterations that, that Blizzard put into that, there's pos there's a clear possibility that this game won't work that way and that in the end they'll have like open world seasons and stuff like that where you can do the story if you want to, but there's all these other ways to progress and, and things like that. I would think that they, they are expecting to go in that direction because I would be really concerned if the idea behind this game is that um, it's just lots of like uh, MMO content expansion on expansion leveling up the same character I, I really want more freedom than that in a diablo game and i would be really concerned if this game turns in in terms of that style of progression turns into lost ark 2.0 uh that would concern me and this goes into my my final point for this video 
which is that when I see that kind of progression, I see how when I play through it the first time, it could feel really, really fun. It could, it feels great to, to play through the world, to explore it. The, the lore seems really interesting. The voice acting is awesome. But I worry that when you have that kind of progression, it, it is very easily, easily monetizable because what happens is um, people are going to want to uh, speed through it especially if there's like a season style thing or if there's like DLC content and that could turn into a situation where people are just paying for convenience. And and that's my, my biggest worry. The game feels great so far, really enjoying it. But my biggest worry is that somewhere in my gut, it feels set up to be pay for convenience in the future. Could be wrong. Really hope I'm wrong. I hope that in the end there's like a lot more game modes that we can log into and it's not just like narrow story progression. You can just log in on a new character to the open world, level up, have fun with your buddies. That's that's what I want from this game and I hope it happens. Um, thanks again to everybody who subscribed to me. You know, when you're a small YouTuber, like getting 25 subscribers in a day regularly is just like crazy. So thank you so much to everyone who subscribed. Uh, I promise good content in the future, I hope. This is a very quick video because I want to, if, if I seem rushed, it's because I want to get back in the queue to get back in Diablo 4 after I get this out. And um, yeah, thank you all and like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the future with this or any other game. I got a few other MMORPG videos coming out soon. Peace.